By the way, guys, this is the first story in our series of reports researching uh, Cincinnati's history with segregation. Mm -hmm. Basically, what the urban heat island effect. It's something we see in cities all around the world, including right here in Cincinnati. But what is it? And why is it so important? An urban heat island occurs when a city feels much warmer temperatures than outlying rural or suburban areas. Of course, the sun's heat and light reach both the city and the country in the same way. So why the big difference in temperature? It has to do with how well the surfaces in each environment absorb and hold heat. In a rural setting, you'll find that most of the area is filled with grass, trees, or in the case of the Wolfer Farm here in Claremont County, crops. And these crops, plants, and trees act like an air conditioner. They all take water up from the ground through their roots and store that water in their stems and leaves. The water eventually travels to small holes on the underside of the leaves. Here that liquid water actually turns to water vapor and is released into the atmosphere. This is called transpiration. And as that liquid water evaporates into water vapor, it actually cools the air all around. It's Mother Nature's air conditioning. <laughs> so as the sun's energy reaches a rural area, not only is less of that energy absorbed and released as heat, but the vegetation in the rural area actually helps to cool the air down. This results in significantly cooler temperatures in the country. When you visit the city, though, you won't see many trees or plants. Instead, what you see are tall buildings, highways, streets, sidewalks, and massive parking lots. And all this stuff is made up of really dense material like steel, concrete, blacktop, and even brick. Many of these materials are darker in color, and dark materials are great at absorbing all wavelengths of sunlight and converting them to heat. And because these materials are so dense, they tend to hold in that heat even at night. So as the sun's energy reaches an urban area, more of that energy is absorbed by all of these dark building materials and released as heat. And that makes the city even hotter than surrounding rural areas. A literal island of heat is created. What makes the temperatures even hotter is the fact that these building materials are also impervious. So when it rains, the water can't flow through them. That means the water runs off and we don't get that cycle of flowing and evaporating water in the city like we do in the country. And that means Mother Nature's air conditioner just doesn't work. So things get hot and stay hot. And all of this creates a much warmer environment all year round, day and night in the city compared to outlying areas. But even within the urban heat island of the city, there are pockets of even hotter air. Neighborhoods that heat up much faster, getting much hotter, and even staying hotter at night compared to other neighborhoods right next to them. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Gum, Local 12 News. Now, I want to mm. thank the Wolfer family for allowing me to, to go out to their farm and yeah. drive their tractor. I actually didn't drive it. The thing drove itself. Oh. But we had a great time I with bet. them. It was one of the best days I've had at work in a while out there in Claremont County. My cousin grew up right around the corner for them, and, and so I was familiar with the area, but they were awesome. By the way, guys, this is the first story in our series of reports researching uh, Cincinnati's history with segregation. Mm -hmm. Basically, what has happened in the past, past policies have determined how the environment is today. Yeah. And so we have a study that has been done that shows some of the neighborhoods in Cincinnati from city to city, within the city, from neighborhood to neighborhood rather, are up to 12 degrees hotter than other neighborhoods just based on those past policies. It is fascinating stuff, and this is something we're gonna continue to explore over the next few months as we talk more about redlining 
as such a horrible thing that was done, uh, you know, done in history. Um, but glad that we're shining a light on this with this project. Yeah, it's some really interesting stuff. And, and like I said, I'm going to be talking more about those neighborhood to neighborhood differences, which are really significant. And even on clear, cool nights like this, mm -hmm. we still have the urban heat island effect. So tonight, for instance, we're forecasted lows in the 40s and outlying areas in the city. It's going to be much warmer tonight than outlying areas.